All right, everybody, this is a video on the Cohen-Kappa coefficient, so we're just going to call it kappa here. Uh, the kappa coefficient is used when you have categorical variables that are being iterated over multiple times, typically by multiple testers or reviewers or something like that, and you're trying to figure out how often these reviewers are in agreement with one another, and you're controlling, in this case, for pure chance. So the example I'm going to give is two doctors that are reviewing patients and looking for skin cancer. If you have patient one come in, you'll put together a table that looks like this, where the first column is cancerous, the second column is not cancerous. The first row would be for doctor one, and the second row would be for doctor two, and again, this is going to be patient number one. So doctor one or doctor one would come in, look at the mole, and say, "Ooh, that looks cancerous to me." And doctor two now comes in and says, "Ooh, yes, I agree, that's cancerous." So here you have doctors that are in agreement for patient one. Then you go on to patient two. You get the same table. So here we got cancerous in the left column, not cancerous in the second column. This is going to be patient number two. This is going to be doctor one and doctor two. Here, Dr. 1 again says this looks cancerous to me, but here Dr. 2 disagrees and says that's not cancerous. At the end of all your patients, you'll get together and you'll put all these up and you'll count how many, how many times the doctors were in agreement for saying that it was cancerous, how many times they were in agreement saying it wasn't cancerous, and how many in between. It, the final table will look a little different where you have Dr. 2 on the top, you have Dr. 1 on the left, and a plus would indicate where that doctor said cancerous and a minus would be where that doctor said not cancerous and here let's say they both said they both were in agreement on 17 cases that they had that the individual had cancer let's say they were in disagreement where doctor one said it was cancerous doctor two said it wasn't cancerous nine times they were dis in disagreement four times where doctor one said it was not cancerous and doctor two said it was cancerous and they were in agreement 20 times where they both said it was not cancerous. If we were to count all these values up, you're going to get 26 for this row, 24 for this row, that's 50 total, 29 for that column, and 21 for that column. Okay, so again, our question is going to be, out of all these results, how often were these doctors in agreement with one another, which really would be very easy to calculate. You would just have to, you know, add those up there. But And then you could say, how many were they in agreement with each other out of the total, so you could just add these up, divide it by the total. But then the question comes in, how often would this occur, have occurred if it was pure chance? So the example I give is, let's say you have one doctor and you have a novice off the street who knows nothing about skin cancer. If you have enough patients come through, they're going to agree on occasion. If the novice still had to write down an answer of whether or not they thought it was cancerous or not, even though they know nothing, they would still get it right or in agreement with Dr. One some of the time. So we're going to control for that. And there's a nice little formula. It's represented by a K for kappa. And it's PO minus PE over 1 minus PE. So PO stands for probability of agreement. I'll call it agree. Uh, observed. So how often did you observe the agreement and what's the probability of that out of the total? That was PO. PE is the probability of agreement by chance. So this is how often w would we have expected to, it to occur by pure chance. PO is very straightforward. So PO is, and I'm going to give these uh, little labels. So this cell is A, this cell is B, cell is C, and cell D. So PO is simply A plus D right? They both agreed here and they both agreed here over the total A plus B plus C plus D. That's your PO. If we were to calculate that, that's going to be 37 on top, 20 plus 17, and 50 on bottom, which I believe is 0.74. So there we go. So that's the, the probability of the agreement that we actually observed. Probability by chance is a little bit more complicated. And this is going to be basically how many times did Dr. 1 state positive and multiplied by how many times Dr. 2 stated positive. You can think of it kind of like a roll of a, of a, a coin, right? If you're trying to see what's the likelihood that you would roll heads, you multiply by the likelihood of 
the first person rolling heads, which is 0.5, and the likelihood of the second person rolling heads, which again is 0.5, rolling heads for both people, right, rolling heads at the same time would be 0 0.25, 0 0.5 times 0.5. So in our case here, what you're actually doing, PE, is going to be the probability of Dr. 1 uh, stating that it was cancer. So that's A plus B, right? It's this row here over the total. There you go. Multiplied by the probability of Dr. 2 saying, saying it was cancer. So that column right there. So that's going to be A plus C divided by the total. And you're going to add that to the probability of them both saying negative. So here, Dr. 1 saying negative is going to be A, or sorry, not, not A. Let's erase that. There you go. Uh, C plus D over the total. And Dr. 2 saying negative, which is going to be B plus D over the total plus D. There we go. Okay. If we were to plug those in, let me just go ahead and write them out here. A, B, B, C, and D. A equals 17, B equals 9, C equals 4, and D equals 20. There we go. Okay, so here we have A plus B. That's going to be 26 over 50 times A plus C, which is going to be 21 over 50, plus C plus D, which is 24 over 50, plus B plus D, which is 29 over 50. So if I can do the math in my head... Let's see here. This would be um, 50.52, right? 0.52. This would be, let's see, what would that be? 0.42. Did I do that right? Let's do the math on that. Brain's not high, high rolling right now. 21 divided by 50. Yep, 0.42 plus 0.48 plus, what would that be? 29 divided by 50. 0.58. And if we multiply this out, 0.52 times 0.42 equals, I'll round it up, put 0.22 plus 0.48 times 0.58 equals, and again, I'll round it up. And that equals an even 0.5 if we round them off. All right, so the probability just by pure chance of these individuals agreeing or disagreeing is going to be 0.5. All right, so that actually kind of makes sense, right? If, if we've got a pretty even keel of two possible answers between two people, you would expect them to be a 50-50 chance that they would agree at any time, just like the coin flip. Okay, so now I'm gonna, we're not going to worry about this, this value here. Um, so we could, we could plug it in, right? We have 0.74, if we have our formula right here, 0.74 is going to be our PO. 0.5 is going to be our PE, and then we have 1 minus 0.5. This is going to be 0.24 over 0.5. And if we do the math on that, 0.24 divided by 0.5 equals 0.48. So there's actually a table you can report to that will kind of weigh your kappa coefficient, whether or not it's good or bad. I think this just it winds up being fairly mediocre. Um, but uh, I'm not really worried about whether or not my pretend data is good or bad or, or, or anything. What I want to point out is actually this formula right here. So we're going to move over here, and I'm going to focus on, on the two parts. So you have the numerator and the denominator. The numerator, we'll call it n, is PO minus PE, right? This is what you observed subtracted by what you expect by chance. That makes complete sense to me. You got a measurement. Somewhere in that measurement is some chance. You want to get rid of it, so you subtract it out, right? That makes sense. The denominator, on the other hand, we'll call it D, is 1 minus the probability by chance. If this is 1 minus the probability of chance, this would equal the probability of disagreement by chance, right? If you're subtracting out all of the agreement by chance from 1, then this would leave you with the probability of disagreement by chance. It doesn't make any sense to me that you would divide by the possible probability of disagreement. That that makes very little chance, uh, very little sense to me. However, while this is mathematically correct, 
that's really not what this formula is trying to tell you. What this formula is trying to tell you is what is the maximum difference between what you could have observed and the probability of chance. Well, if you observed all agreement, if PO, the everything you observed was in agreement, it would equal 1. Well, if you come here, that's exactly what that's saying. Is if I got full 100% agreement, it would have been 1. So what I'm doing is creating a ratio or creating a fraction or, you know, a part over a whole of what I saw in the numerator. So basically the experiment or the measurement, let's call it the measurement. I think measurement's more correct. Okay, it's going to be the measurement divided by the maximum possible. So just like how you would have any fraction where it's a part over a whole, we are doing a part, but the part is our measurement over a whole, and the whole is going to be the maximum possible difference that could have occurred. Anyway, I hope this was somewhat insightful. Uh, I hope that it actually gave you some um, understanding of what this formula is actually telling you. I know there's actually some debate over you know, how accurate and how useful this formula actually is, but I came across it. It bothered me that I didn't quite understand this denominator, so I dug into it and I felt that this video might be useful for others. hope it was, and I hope to see you at another video.